And I went ahead and it's up to you. Chris doesn't like onions, so I'm not gonna garnish it with green onions on his, but just with a little bit of parsley. I think over the potatoes would be good, even though it's got green broccoli in it, but just a little bit over the pork. And there you have it. Orange garlic, well, seared pork loin chops with an orange garlic sauce. Does that sound pretty good? Well, hi everyone, I'm Amy, Amy Roloff, and we're in my little kitchen. Uh, sometimes during the holidays and even the winter months, uh, especially in the Midwest or where it's really cold in the Dakotas or wherever else you may be, uh, we have a tendency to eat a lot of casseroles, heavy dishes and meats and stuff like that because you know why? It is comfort food. And come on, we all want to feel nice and warm and cozy on those cold winter days outside. Anyway, here in the Pacific Northwest, we get cold, rain, and dreary. Today, I'm going to do kind of a really simple, uh, if you want to call it fried, I like to call it sauteed pork chops, uh, boneless pork loin chops. And it's going to be in a, like a light just a hint of sweetness uh, with a little heat from red pepper flakes, but an orange kind of sauce to it. A little, not a glaze, but kind of just like a sauce. And I just wanted something light with a meat that is so dense. The biggest thing about uh, pork loin chops, I got these at my one of my favorite meat, uh, meat markets uh, here locally, which I love because it's all local meat is uh, the meeting place. Anyway, I brought the meat to room temperature, get it out of your fridge at least 30 minutes prior to baking it. You don't really want to cook meat directly from the refrigerator. It's gotta come to room temperature so it can evenly cook. It doesn't cook too quick on the outside and not enough on the inside. So I went ahead and salted both sides a little bit just to kind of help tenderize it a little bit. I wanna remember this note because as I prepare the seasoning rub for it, um, I don't uh, want to over salt it. So we're gonna create just a very simple little rub for it. I'm gonna add some flour to it, just like I do with my uh, skinless, boneless chicken breast. It is amazing, just that little light coating of flour how it kind of seals in the juices, the flavors and everything, and really kind of helps not dry out your meat that doesn't have, or the cuts of meat that doesn't have a lot of fat. So that's what we're gonna do here with the pork chop, just like I do with the chicken. So we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit, but we're gonna be a lot over by the stove. And along with, I'm, I'm not even sure what to call this recipe. I'll come up with a name for it and you can check it out over at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Uh, but it's gonna have something with orange in it. Um, and then we're gonna have, because it's winter time here and mashed potatoes are like food for the soul. So we're gonna have mashed potatoes with broccoli and very garlicky with a little bit of cheese. So let's get going and let's make dinner. Okay, the other thing I wanted to share with you too is if you haven't checked out Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen site in a while, we have these recipe book holders. And see, here's my note and all I have on here is pork chops. And I listed some of the ingredients for the rub and I'm gonna have the mashed potatoes and broccoli on it, but it is so good, so convenient. So it's off here on the sides. I might have to wear my glasses because sometimes I can't read my own writing, but it is so much more convenient instead of me looking down. But your iPad, your phone, your cookbook, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. I'm using it. So anyway, check it out at over at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Okay, let's get going on this rub here. I have about, uh, I have about two, two and a half tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons of flour. We wanna create that nice little coating on the pork chops. 
So I'm gonna add in a little bit of heat. So I don't know, a little bit of hot paprika. Definitely some garlic here. We're gonna have garlic, garlic, garlic. Thank goodness Chris and I like each other. Cause we're having a lot of garlic here. So I'd say at least a teaspoon or more. A little bit of onion powder. And just, just a tad of smoked paprika. I do not want the smoked paprika to overpower this dish because we're gonna have this nice citrusy um, zest from an orange and orange juice when we create kind of just this little sauce with uh, white wine vinegar. I chose white wine vinegar. If you wanna use apple cider vinegar, that's fine too. I should have a fork. I'll just use this. Okay, I'm just gonna just stir this around a little bit. I'm just going to um, Sometimes I like tasting the rub because sometimes I don't think this is enough. Um, oh yeah. Okay, the garlic, the garlic is enough here. I'm gonna add in a little bit more hot paprika. Paprika, paprika, yeah. I think that's enough here. I just tell you the truth, I, just, I did add a pinch of salt here. Just a pinch though, that's it. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is just kinda gently do a light coating of flour. Then you just shake off the ex ex excess. want to make sure it's all kind of coated. I know I'm not really doing the sides, which I probably should, because these are kind of thick pork loin chops. And with the excess, I'll just kind of do the sides a little bit. There we go. So depending on the size of your pork chops, maybe two, three tablespoons of flour. I'm definitely gonna use my three. And I have Daisy right here at my feet. I don't know what she's waiting for because nothing is up here that she can have. So we're just, like I said, just lightly flouring it, just kind of rubbing it in there a little bit and shaking off the excess, excess, because you definitely don't want, you know, flour tasting pork chops. And these are boneless. Obviously. <laughs> okay, I am gonna go wash my hands. And then we're gonna go over to the stove and get and sear the pork chops. And then we're gonna turn down the heat, cover it with foil and have the heat from the pan and put it on medium to low heat to have it continue to cook the inside. Like I said, this is going to be an easy, you know, doesn't take very long kind of a uh, meal. But because of the thickness of these chops that I have, you can pound them out a little bit more if you'd like so that they don't uh, take as long to cook all the way through. Uh, I guess I chose not to do that, probably should have. But anyway, I just wanna make sure Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go wash our hands and we'll be back. Okay. 
I think the oil in my pan is hot enough. I have it on about medium high, medium high heat. I'm still trying to get used to this new stove top that I have because I think it cooks uh, quicker, faster than my other one. So I'm just gonna sear these. Probably didn't have it on as hot as I had hoped or didn't wait long enough. That's me, patience. Okay. So it's probably gonna take, depending, you don't wanna, be careful you don't wanna cook these too fast because they'll brown on the outside way too quick and they won't have a chance to kind of cook inside. So I do have it on about medium to high heat. But uh, this will take, because of the thickness of these chops, uh, these will probably take at least five minutes, maybe, on each side. You know, test it out according to, you know, your pan that you're using. I'm using a cast iron. I'm trying to get um, a little more familiar cooking on a cast iron. But I thought when it comes to searing and that, this would be really good. So, anyway, I don't know. Can you see this here? There we go. So it's sizzling away. And of course, we've been only going for, what, a couple of minutes? A minute? Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. We want a nice sear to it. A nice golden brown. So anyway, I'll be back here in about a few minutes. Okay, it took a little less than I had thought. Maybe about three to four minutes on each side, but... This is the color that you want, like a nice golden seared um, pork chop. So we're gonna just continue to put this on medium to low heat and have it continue to cook. I'm gonna cover it with foil. And It'll continue to sizzle a little bit in here because the pan is still hot. It's a cast iron pan. But I have it down on medium to low heat so the heat will continue to um, cook the pork chop. But use your thermometer. Uh, get it at the right temperature, which I cannot remember. Follow the directions, but in the recipe, I'm not sure if it's like 130, 140 if not more. But anyway, so because of the thickness of the pork chops that I have, this will probably take maybe about 15 minutes. So I'll see you back here and then we'll get going on the sauce. I went ahead and put some butter in here already. And because I'm going to add you know, broccoli to it. I just really want these like a rough mash. I don't want it creamy. More a little bite to the uh, potatoes and with some of the broccoli in it. Now you have, a, all of you have different ways of making mashed potatoes and they're all so luscious and good and creamy and chunky and rough and whatever it may be to your liking. I put in a little butter. I did add a little bit of salt because just like pasta, potatoes, you know, they absorb a lot of that. So you gotta be careful of the amount of salt you put in, but they need salt for flavor. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of Greek yogurt. If you don't want a Greek yogurt, go ahead and maybe add some sour cream. I just want a little bit of tang to these potatoes, especially with the pork chops and a little bit of honey and orange and that kind of sauce going on. Um, I just wanted a little bit of tang to these potatoes. 
So I think we're done there. And this isn't gonna need a lot. Depending on how well you cook your potatoes will depend on, so I'm just gonna do what? Maybe two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt because of its thickness and because of the tang. Sour cream will work perfect. I know this isn't a clear bowl, so you can't really see, but here we go. I'm just turning it around and because I want garlic, I'm gonna add some of this minced up garlic and hopefully the heat from the potatoes will kind of soften up a little bit of this garlic. There we go. I almost forgot that. And it's sitting right in front of me. How can I forget that? Oh dear. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. And I know some people have uh, used buttermilk, which is fine too. It's really a matter of what kind of flavor do you want the mashed potatoes to take on? So I just do maybe not even a quarter cup. I mean, I just pour a little bit in here. Oh man, I smell it already. I'm gonna add in just a little bit more. Okay, who does not like garlic? I, I don't even know what to say if you don't like garlic. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of this broccoli. Now, broccoli, you can use frozen broccoli if you want. I went ahead and cooked it, but this is broccoli that I already had cooked, kinda, somewhat, and, um, Daisy was licking my feet. I got socks on. Just gonna add in a little bit of this broccoli. So I'm, I'm gonna say half a cup to maybe a cup. Whoa, I think that came out a little too fast. Oh yeah, but that's a better consistency. And then you just wanna, if you're gonna use hand beaters or something like that, you just wanna make sure, uh, cause right now I'm thinking, I don't wanna stir this too much cause then your potatoes, mashed potatoes become a little gummy. So just be careful how much you stir it or if you use the hand mixer or something like that. Okay, that's basically about it. And I'm gonna uh, put in some grated cheese. And you can use parm. I would prefer probably like a drier cheese, like parm, Romano. Um, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano or Picarno. A kernel, something like that. And if you really wanted some tang, add a little bit of goat cheese or um, unsweetened, um, that Italian cheese, mascarpone. That doesn't sound right, but you know what cheese I'm talking about, don't you? I got it, I have it in my fridge. But I kind of wanted parm. And I think a little bit of fresh cracked pepper would go great. 
And I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit. Yeah. Now, let me taste a bite. Mm. Oh yeah, it's garlicky. Mm. I love it. I am so tempted to add a little bit more salt in this, which I might just do. But sometimes you can wait on that. <coughs> wait on that and let your guests at the table put their own amount of salt on it. Okay. Our potatoes are done. I'm gonna put this back on the stove. To keep warm and then I'm gonna check on our pork chops and get ready to make the sauce. We're gonna go ahead and finish up making our sauce. So first I'm gonna zest some of this orange, at least half of it, to kind of just give it that little bit of citrusy, little sweetness to it. That's why I don't want to add too much honey. And I'm just going to add a hint of um, rosemary, just a hint, because rosemary to me is a strong herb. But I don't know, I just think rosemary goes well with beef and also with pork. Get all those zest in there. And then I like to swipe it so I get every little bit. Because there's lots of flavor left on this thing. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna squeeze it as best I can. Ugh. It's not a very juicy orange. Got a lot of pulp in there. Maybe I should have rolled it around a little bit to loosen it up. I need this whole orange. So I would have to say a small to slightly medium orange. <sighs> would be good. Sorry, I'm focusing on getting as much orange out of here as I possibly can. If you can see, it's not producing as much as I would have thought. So this might only be a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. I would have preferred two, maybe two. Oh, I just, oh, I don't have the grip. Okay, I think I've got all of it. Getting any of the juice by pressing it. See, I like to try and get every little bit as I can if I'm gonna use something in a recipe. How's the saying go? Don't leave anything behind? Well, the saying don't leave a man behind, but that's for war, which is not a fun thing. But don't leave anything behind. So by pressing it, I'm getting a little bit more. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now where is all my utensils to kind of, oh yeah. 
Let me, I still got a little bit of garlic left. I'm gonna mince up a little bit of rosemary. And before I serve up, I'll chop up a little bit of fresh parsley. Okay. I hope I am not cooking down my sauce here. No. We're gonna kind of get all those pan juices from the pork chop with the white wine vinegar and then the broth. Cook that down a little bit. We're gonna cook up, cook the uh, garlic a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I will say, I don't know, about a quarter teaspoon. We're gonna get some of the garlic, okay. Let's go over there and finish up making the sauce. Okay, we're back over here. We've got a little bit of the pan juices going on. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the garlic and rosemary. We're just gonna let that cook for a little bit, just to kind of warm it up. You don't want to cook it too fast because you definitely don't want to burn the garlic. Mm, I can al already smell the aromatics. Add in a little bit of the white wine vinegar. But I don't know, about a tablespoon, no, a couple teaspoons. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit since it was on simmer. I forgot to bring the broth over. sauce. We're just going to cook this down a little bit until it thickens up. I'm going to go ahead and add in the juice of the orange, one orange and the zest. I did not add any salt to this because I'm, I'll have to taste it, but I'm hoping the salt from the pork will be enough and I don't have to add any more. And so you just want this to simmer for a little bit. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you, I've got a product from Michigan. It's called American Spoon. My dad sent me this package of jams and other fun, good stuff, and one of them contained the honey. So I'm using American Spoon. It's out of, uh, I think, uh, Petoskey, Michigan. So hey, I'm kind of happy about that. Now, I don't want this overly sweet, so I'm just gonna barely, because you know what, if I over sweet it, or sweeten it too much, guess what happens? Chris won't need it because he doesn't like sweet stuff on meat. So we're going to see how this goes. Oh, I love this, the, the little hint of the orange coming through with the rosemary, a little bit of the garlic. Oh yeah, that's the thing I forgot to add. 
I just want to put in a little bit of heat to this. I should have toasted these a little bit. We're just going to do a couple of specks of red pepper flakes. So that was about a cup, just a little over a cup of broth. So we're just gonna let this simmer for a little bit. Let me see how it's tasting though. Oh, I like it. But you know what? I think it needs a little bit more honey. And I think it needs a little salt. There we go. Where did I put my salt? Usually I have one on the counter in here, so I must have moved it. Just a little sprinkle of salt. So I have this on medium low. I tell you, half the time, I don't even understand what happens to all my spoons. I need more of them. I need more of them for taste team. Oh, that's a little better. Got that little hint of orange and rosemary. Definitely the garlic. Just enough heat from the red pepper. But I definitely want to make sure I don't salt it up. So I'm just going to let this simmer for a little bit. I'm going to clean this up and then we'll get ready to plate it. I think I have a little bit too robust of a sauce going on here. Turn that heat down just a little bit. Well, before we plate the food, I want to nestle in. See how nice and golden the pork chops turned out? I want to um, nestle in the pork chops in with this little sauce and have that absorb it a little bit. Look at all those juices coming. It didn't thicken up as much as I had hoped. So if you want, you can um, just make a little bit like a corn starch and water, a roux liquid. Um, gosh, what do they call that? Flour and uh, milk or water or whatever is a roux, but corn starch, a slurry. Um, do a little bit of cornstarch and uh, maybe some milk or water if you want a little bit of a thicker sauce here. So we're just gonna let this heat up for a little bit with the pork chops in it. And then I'm gonna continue to clean up and then we'll plate it. Okay, here is the meat. It is finished, but I do wanna say there's a one step I forgot to tell you was to add in like, I don't know, just a, a little bit of slab of butter. It'll add that richness, that creaminess. 
And because the sauce was a little bit runny for me, I did create a slurry. And like I said, it's just a little bit of cornstarch and a little bit of water. If you want to add the chicken stock like you started off with making the sauce, that's fine too. But I think it gives it a nice rich sauce here. So I'm just spooning it over the pork here. Okay, let's dish up. I'm hungry. Okay, so today in Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, we made a uh, seared pork with a nice like orange, I'm sure, I'm not sure what to call this sauce. Kind of like a, uh, I don't want to call it orange honey because it's just a hint of honey. I don't want people to think it's too sweet because it's not. So I'm just going to kind of call it like a little bit of, uh, I don't know, but it's going to be orange something because there's a hint of orange. Maybe I'll call it an orange garlic sauce over the pork. That'll be it. Okay. Half the time is coming up with a name for the recipe that kind of describes what I did. So anyway, let's dish up the uh, mashed potatoes. We're just gonna kind of gently lay. Don't worry, this isn't all for me. I figured I'll dish up Chris first. But I think, I think we can get this, can't we? Without it being too hot, let me. Here we go. We're gonna just lay this right next to it. Definitely going to get some of that sauce. And I went ahead, and it's up to you. Chris doesn't like onions, so I'm not going to garnish it with green onions on his, but just with a little bit of parsley. I think over the potatoes would be good, even though it's got green broccoli in it. But just a little bit over the pork. And there you have it. Orange garlic, well, seared pork loin chops with an orange garlic sauce. Does that sound pretty good? Anyway, I hope you guys go check it out at amyrolloffslittlekitchen.com. Subscribe, be a part of what I'm doing over here. We're gonna bring you lots of stuff coming into the new year. Uh, a little more personal time with me, chit chat, maybe topics. I'm gonna try and get some other people to cook with me as well. So anyway, and cook with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a bite. Gotta have a bite. Mm. Kinda get that sauce in there. Mm. I tell you guys, just that light dusting of flour uh, just salting the pork chop as it comes to room temperature really helps kind of like tenderize it. Uh, just lightly flouring it helps keep that moisture in as well. This is really good. I really like this. So anyway, like I said, thank you for joining me in my little kitchen. Eat with a lot of love and keep gathering around the table. So from my kitchen to yours, see you next time. Check out Amy Roloff Little Kitchen.